Did you know that in 2022, paleontologists made new discoveries about T-Rex's face? They found out that plants did not form the first forests and proposed that humans eating meat did not drive the evolution of our bigger brains. So if you haven't heard about these discoveries, I'm Andrew, welcome to Prehistoric Australia. Normally on this channel, I talk exclusively about Australian paleontology, but today we are participating in Paleo Rewind. Paleo Rewind is a collaboration of channels that explain the most important prehistoric discoveries of the past year. Each of us are covering a different month of the year. I'll be talking about the month of January and get pumped, there's an Australian discovery at the end of this video. So without further ado, let's kick off Paleo Rewind 2022. The year began with a new study about Tyrannosaurus Rex. Published on the 10th of January, the paper examines the neurovascular canals in the face of Sue the T-Rex, who was discovered in the United States. Neurovascular canals are pipes, which contain blood vessels and nerve fibres. The first discovery was that neurovascular canals covered a large area above the teeth of Sue's upper jaw. And this is because T-Rex constantly regrew its teeth and needed blood vessels to run deep enough into their tooth sockets in order to provide sufficient nutrients for both old and newly emerging teeth. The second discovery was that the concentration of neurovascular canals in the snout and lower jaw of T-Rex were not as numerous as predicted. A concentrated sensory network tends to exist in aquatic and semi-aquatic animals, such as Spinosaurus and crocodiles, to sense minor changes in water pressure. Animals based on land don't need this adaptation. As a result, the facial sensitivity of T-Rex was average. Instead, the system of canals could have been attached to pads made of keratin for either temperature regulation or social signaling with other T-Rex. There was also discussion about past research into whether T-Rex had lips. However, this study concluded that the evidence for and against was inconclusive and further research into that area was needed. So if you want to find out more, Edge has a fantastic video breaking down this paper in greater detail. A long-standing idea is that human ancestors evolved bigger brains and bigger bodies when they started eating a lot more meat in their diet. But is this true? Well, on January 24th, a new paper challenged this popular theory. The theory goes that Homo erectus started the trend of increased meat eating. It is common across East Africa to find fossil sites where Homo erectus is in close proximity to animal bones bearing cut marks made by stone tools, showing animal hunting behaviour. The major issue the authors found was that these famous fossil sites suffered from spikes in sampling size due to their popularity. Paleontologists have simply made less effort to sample sites from both before and after 2 million years ago. So, the authors recalculated the average trend by first modifying the number of bones based on the amount of effort that went to finding them. The result? The meat-eating frequency of our human ancestors was consistent from 2.6 to 1.2 million years ago. So for now, the meat-made-us-human theory is dead meat, until more evidence is found from the less studied fossil sites. Instead, other theories must now be considered into why our human ancestors developed bigger bodies and bigger brains. Plants did not form the first canopies as first thought. Instead, it was lichens. Lichens are a symbiotic relationship between fungi and either algae or cyanobacteria. Lichen trees are called nematophytes and towered over the early plants from the Ordovician to the Devonian period between 488 to 358 million years ago. And many actually formed the first closed canopies, which was revealed in a new study published on the 25th of January. Firstly, a canopy needs height. An extreme example is Prototaxite's Logany, the tallest species of nematophyte, which lived in Saudi Arabia 392 million years ago and reached up to 22 meters high. 
Secondly, a closed canopy needs its tree trunks to be in relatively close proximity. Trunk spacings are calculated using data from fossil soils known as paleosols. For example, the Brenda Paleosol from the United States was used to calculate spacings ranging from 11 to 23 centimeters for a Silurian species that grew densely, like a field of corn plants. Thirdly, a closed canopy needs branches at the top of its trunk. Some nematophytes branched sparsely and allowed a lot of light to pass through. Others had flat or thin or common branches. Overall, lichen tree forests were incredibly important as their initial canopies provided safe, shaded habitats for the first plants to spread across the land. Most marsupials today live in Australia, but they did not originate here or even evolve during the age of mammals. In fact, a new study published on the 30th of January is confident that marsupials evolved during the age of dinosaurs. A phylogenetic analysis of six fossil mammals discovered that Delta Theridium had enough distinct traits to be considered a true marsupial. In life, it would have looked like a 15 centimetre long opossum with carnivorous teeth. In fact, CT scans of new specimens revealed that its teeth in particular were distinctly marsupial, in the sense that the last premolar is the only tooth to be replaced after birth. It lived in Mongolia around 80 million years ago during the late Cretaceous period, meaning that Delta Theridium is the oldest known marsupial in the fossil record. I promised you a discovery from Australia, and here it is. A paper published on the 7th of January revealed new, well-preserved soft-bodied fossils of plants and animals that lived in rainforests and responded in different ways to the drying Australian climate. They come from a New South Wales fossil site called McGrath's Flat. It most likely was once a gentle billabong in a mesic rainforest between 16 and 11 million years ago during the Miocene Epoch. At this time, rainforests like McGrath's Flat were on the brink of retreating as Australia became drier and more arid, a process called aridification. So naturally, at this site, plant fossils include both classic rainforest species, but also species you would expect to find in dry environments. The rainforest specialists include both Nothophagus and Ligodium. They no longer survive in the arid conditions of McGrath's Flat today, and are typically only found in coastal patches of wet tropical rainforest. What can we learn from the animal fossils at this site? Well, just like the rainforest plants, many fossil insects, such as alderflies, caddisflies, and Masoterms termites, have relatives that today are only found in warmer and wetter conditions around Australia, especially patches of tropical rainforest. Clearly, these insect groups did not adapt to drier conditions, but instead relocated to regions that remained warm and wet. Overall, by comparing the types of fossils found at McGrath's Flat to the distributions of their modern day relatives, we can clearly see that some retreated while others expanded their distribution. But all of these responses prove that Australia was indeed drying out during the Miocene Epoch. So, there you have it. If you enjoyed learning about this Australian discovery, what are you waiting for? Check out our other videos about Australian paleontology. Special thanks to Edge for allowing us to be part of Paleo Rewind 2022. Other channels will be premiering videos over the next 12 days, covering new discoveries during the other months of 2022. On New Year's Day, Edge will showcase a final compilation video. I'll add links in the description when they upload their videos, so you can watch it all as a, a full series. The next video released tomorrow will be Raptor Chatter covering the month of February, and I just can't wait to watch it. Thanks folks, hope you all have a great new year, and we'll see you next time.